Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Zed Ali al Sagop and welcome to this uh, tutorial on how to get straight A's or nine steps on how to get straight A's. Basically, the reason I'm doing it is I did a visual note. I like to draw my ideas, my thoughts, and I summarize this in this visual note. Uh, nine steps on how to do very well when you study and it was actually designed for medical university imu but i've taught it in other in schools and so on and it really summarized the most important aspects that i teach in my learning skills workshops which i've done for years let's see uh, okay you can see here <laughs> this is a, this is a drawing i did in 2018 it's called active learning and the nine steps that we're going to talk about but what the way i designed this drawing is is based around it's it's encapsulating uh which is the essence of of the university is about the lectures uh? so in schools it's about the classes it's what you do before what you do during and what you do after in corporate might be workshops or training workshops what you should do be doing before and what you should be doing during and what you should do after to really get the most out of it and empower not just to prepare you for the exam that's great you can get A's you can actually cram you don't have to do all this but you want to have whatever you learn you want to keep it so when you graduate you have much of this knowledge it's captured long term beyond the exam and this is what I always teach when I have my learning skills workshops I teach you for exams I teach you for long term because just for exams yeah it's great to do well in exams but you also want to have this knowledge and these skills after and I, this is what this nine steps do if you practice these nine steps you're not just going to get A's or four point or your GPS you're gonna have this knowledge long term and that's really important so let's look at these nine steps so what do you do before a class or a lecture how many actually actually prepare before a lecture or a class or a workshop prepare for it uh, you will find out even if the lecture has some activities they will do it but do, is it has it become a habit that you actually do anything before the lecture you just go and expect to just learn and then then you revise after no this is the key. If you want to have great results and you don't want to waste time, actually preparing before the class or lecture will save you time, much time later, especially when you want to prepare for the exams and even during the lecture itself to learn, get the most out of it. So always be prepared or prepare for the lecture. And these are three things that you should do. Okay, The first thing, of course, is to review. So if you've got access to the lecture notes and so on, you review with them. You look through them, you scan them, maybe you read them a bit, get the big pictures, like the skeleton, or like if you're talking about a puzzle, you know, if you if you see the picture of the puzzle, it's much easier to do the puzzle than just getting the puzzle and you just haven't seen a picture, try putting the pieces together. Once you see the big pictures, in other words, what you want to do before the lecture, the class, or the workshop is to prepare to get the big picture. Once you get the big picture, it's like the skeleton. It's easy to put the flesh in and get it going, okay? You want to get that big picture. So the first thing is to review. So you look through the notes. But this is the first level. This is uh, maybe a like B level unless you're a genius. The second level, which is now that you've previewed or reviewed it you actually extract the key concepts the keywords and you you, you extract them what are the key concepts it's very important to be familiarize it with the key concepts especially when you're in university in a university you will have lectures from all over the world you might have from sri lanka you might have from hong kong you might have from pakistan india uh, you might have from scotland you might have from australia canada england so if English is your second language, if you're familiar with the concept, when they start babbling in their own accent, if you're familiar with the concept, even if they say, war, uh, war, 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 and say, what the, if you know water, you know already, because you just can trigger it. So getting familiarizing yourself with the key concepts and extracting them before the class will help you a lot. That's like the skeleton, huh? skeleton. Once you have the skeleton, the flesh will stick. Huh? It becomes more memorable. And the third step, which is really the A plus level, is to do a, a rough sketch note, or maybe, maybe just a simple mind map of the key concepts and how they are interlinked. Like the, as I mentioned, the skeleton, get the essence. Now you have the big picture. When you go to class, actually you know most of the knowledge on a surface level, the bird's eye view. So now you're really prepared. So these are these three steps. If you practice these three steps, when you go to class, you're gonna really enjoy it and you're gonna get the most out of it. So let's these three steps. So when before you have a class, this is a good starting point is to prepare for the class and if you do these three things i can assure you you'll do much better than just going to class expecting to learn everything on the spot 
now you're prepared okay so say that you've done those three steps you prepared yourself for the class now the biggest challenge during a class today is with our instant gratification or handphones actually to focus so i haven't put in this drawing i haven't put the ability to focus the skills the the techniques that's something you have to learn i can teach you that i'll have that in future videos but you don't have to learn how to focus and concentrate during the class itself but once you figure out how to focus and concentrate uh, and clarity comes yeah the fourth one is clarity so now or clarify you already have a big picture you have actually scribbled some notes you have some notes you're probably going to scribble your new notes i always have this strategy of note taking three times you revise your notes three times first you scribble then you take some detailed notes during class and then you create some juicy visual notes which i'm going to do a webinar soon on how to do visual note taking so if you do these three things my your notes are just going to be accelerating for learning purposes and you're just going to go wow it becomes even an assessment tool but anyway that's that's beside the point but you need to clarify so now you have all the basic ideas the notes the ideas the points and so on now you want to clarify so so when the teacher is speaking you already know the key comes you don't need to worry about this you're going to get all the points but it's about clarifying so you really understand it's not just that you remember you understand so you want to clarify so now you're focused on how can i cl clarify what he's saying huh? And, and once you, you start clarifying, now you start capturing. So you might have missed out something when you just scribbled your notes. You spent maybe half an hour to prepare, one hour to prepare, or even 10 minutes. Now it's capturing. Now you want to capture more detailed notes. You can use Cornell method, whatever method you want to use. But you want, now you're just capturing your scribbling. It doesn't have to be beautiful because you're going to, as I said, I, I believe you take notes three times and it's never a waste of time. Uh, detailed notes is a waste of time to take three times, but not uh, the third time you take notes is about capturing just the key concept, whether it's a mind map or a visual note. So and that is great for revision okay so now you're capturing so now you're, you're talking about clarifying and capturing the keynotes you're taking a bit detailed notes it's okay to scribble but you're capturing it and then this third or the, the the a plus level is the ability to visualize information and this is getting back to visual note taking and so on. i've studied the world champions in memory i've practiced myself many of these techniques whatever you have to learn what all the, the super memory kings, what they always do is whatever concept, every word, whatever the idea, they will transform it into image. They will transform it into a crazy image um, or visualize it in, in an in a image that's vivid, that's memorable. So in other words, you have to, in the process now, you, you, you're taking notes, you think about how to visualize these key concepts so they become memorable. And once you learn how to do that, you might not be able to do everything in the class, but you're getting ideas. And the visualization of, of key concept ideas and points and so on is the power of the super memory because when you visualize into pictures you're activating the visual cortex in your brain which is the most powerful part to remember stuff of course you want to use all your senses but the visualization part is so powerful and that's why most memory champions use that they visualize and there's different techniques you have storytelling you have memory palace there's a lot of techniques to remember acronyms and mnemonics and so on but the thing is you want to visualize it so this is the problem so if you do these three things during the class you're taking notes you're clarifying what you have prepared and you're visualizing it my god your notes are exceptional uh, in terms of uh, memorable so these are three things you should be doing during class the other things you can do but these three things if you do these three things i can guarantee you your notes is going to be very helpful when you as you go along throughout the semester and you're preparing for the exams and so on say that you have done the first three steps is to prepare before the class and then the fourth step fifth step and sixth step during class including your focus you did all that you clarified you captured you visualized you had some ideas you captured your detailed notes and so on now comes the stage which also a lot of people skip they do they, they start doing it just before the exam but here's the revision part this is where the power comes in this is where the deep learning comes in this is where if you practice these next three steps which are the most powerful steps for the long-term memory just just for the exam beyond the exam okay so the first thing of course is which is about especially in your university is to reflect okay you have your notes you have your what you've learned you reflect upon your what, what you've learned and of course you can talk about the what the when the where it's important yeah it's fine but at least at university level it's about the how about the why and you go beyond so what what if then what uh we're talking about big things whatever <laughs> okay that one is not so important but you think beyond and you reflect upon it and this is also where uh as again is, is i call it the third step is that you create a visual note of your lecture or your topic and a visual note is not about detail notes it's just capturing the essence the essential key concepts and you visualize them actually 
this drawing here itself is, is a typical example of a visual note. So you can say this tutorial is all captured in this one drawing. Now, if you do that, you capture everything in one drawing, that drawing can become internal memory. And, and when you sit for exam, you just have that picture in front of you and it captures everything in that lecture, everything in that topic. And if you can integrate multiple pictures, sometimes multiple topics, you can, but that's, that's a bit beyond. But the ability to reflect upon why it's called the revision time, reflection is so important, it's so important for deep learning. But there's more than that, okay? To remember things, you can't just reflect, you need to repeat. Repeat to remember and remember to repeat. Actually, based on research, the most powerful technique for long-term memory and preparation of exam is called spaced repetition. Now, of course, when we want to remember something, we might repeat it 10 times in the same time. That Car, 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 car. <laughs> I want to remember the word car. So car, car, car. Yeah, that's fine. But one of the things they've done by research, they found that you need to, spaced repetition is that you need to repeat again and again the same thing that you've learned to be able to recall it whenever you want to. So it might be in your head, but the key in what you want in terms of the learning process, you want to be able to recall whatever you learn anytime you want it. Now to do that, you need to practice recall a lot. So they have different methods of, sp they call spaced repetition. The most common one for studies is the best time to, to review, revise what you have learned is actually straight away after the lecture, one hour after the lecture, if you can do that. But that might be tough if you have multiple lectures in, in a row. But actually the day after. So you do a quick review. When I say review, it's not about spending hours. Five to 10 minutes can do magic. You look through your lecture just to read, your mind is fresh. And then maybe after one week, after seven days, I'm just, this in this drawing actually is a simplified one. And then after 30 days and maybe after three months. There are different uh, spaced repetition methods. For example, language is one of the most powerful ones. They say learn a word per day, you know, then you always forget, right? So actually what, what one technique was that you repeat the same word for, with sentences for six days in a row. If you do that for six days in a row, it becomes part of your long-term memory. So, but the most important is spaced repetition, that you repeat what you've learned at different times, not at the same time, at different times. And when you do that, the memory becomes more powerful. It's probably in your head, but the most important thing we talk about learning at, in university is to be able to recall what you have learned at any time when you need it, and especially during the exams. It's no point being able to rec recall after the exams because some people do that when they're stressed, but you want to be able to recall it when it's needed. And by doing so, you need to do it a lot. And so repetition and be able to testing yourself is so powerful, okay? And then the next one is practice, okay? It's not just practice. It's something called deliberate practice, which is one of the most powerful techniques which most athletes use is not just practice, it's deliberate practice. Like for example, uh, if you're learning a skill, so I'm going to relate it to sports, like say that, uh, of course, sports is kind of generic. So say that I want to learn how to shoot a three-pointer in basketball, right? Uh, now, when you watch the players do that in matches, you say, wow, this looks so easy, right? Do you know how many times they've repeated it and reflected? But so otherwise, say I throw, I miss the shot, right? So what do I do? I do it. And then I seek feedback. I reflect again. I reflect, seek feedback. Maybe I have recorded my video and say, what have I done wrong? And then what I do, the next step is I tweak. And then I test it again. I repeat. So I'm practicing it. I'm checking it. I'm doing it, seeking feedback from myself or from video or from others, expert trainers. Then I tweak, I adapt, and then I improve. And I keep on doing this cycle again and again. That's deliberate practice. You keep on tweaking and improving until you get it right. And that's the same whether it's mathematics, science, anything that's related to skills, you need to do deliberate practice if you really want to do, you want to read that excellent level, not just, because if you repeat the same thing again and again, as, as Einstein said, you might go crazy. That's, that's like going crazy. So, so don't worry, it's not about, if you don't get things right, it's not that you're stupid or something. It's just simply that you haven't found the right technique or you just need to practice a bit more. That's all, you just tweak. So I always say to people, the two things that stops people becoming great students, one is that they don't work hard. And the second one is they don't, they don't use the right techniques. And most of the times, a lot of students, they work hard, they still don't get results. It's because they don't use the right techniques. So it's all about practicing, tweaking and, and finding the right, getting feedback. And, and it goes a cycle until you get it right. And, you, and even when you get it right, you repeat more, so it becomes to the level of mastery, uh, which is a higher level. So if you do all this after your revise, your, your sessions, whether it's workshops, classes, or lectures, my God, that's the nine steps, okay? So let's re recap what we have learned. Okay, uh, let's recap what we've learned. So now what you've seen is actually a drawing I did uh, in 2018. I called it active learning. So if you're wondering what it, does active learning mean to me, this is active.
active learning, the uh, nine steps, and what you should do before a class or a lecture or a workshop. Review. The first thing you should do is review. And then to a higher level, you start extracting the key concept, the words, the points, the ideas. You extract them and you can just scribble them on notes. That's the third step. You scribble them on notes. It can be in a mind map form. It's just a simple one. You capture them and you see the hierarchy and so on, the sub level and level and so on. Capture it. So that's if you can do that before a class. And when I'm saying this, you don't actually have to spend a long time. This could take about anything from five minutes to half an hour to one hour but one hour is probably you don't have time at least spend half an hour before 20 minutes it's going to have such an impact on your learning long term as it's going to have impact actually you need to spend less time because you're going to get much more through when you go to the class and of course in the revision time you already learned so much from the what you've done before and during so it's a very important the preparation is so important uh, before the lecture and very few people actually do that Okay, and then during the class, you need to learn how to focus. There are many methods to learn how to focus, of course, but I'm, I didn't cover that in this session. But once you learn how to focus, which is essential, uh, you need to, now that you've you've got the basic idea, you have the big picture, right? It's like in a puzzle, as I mentioned, the puzzle, you have the big picture. Now it's easy to put the pieces together, or you have the skeleton, right? Now it's just put the flesh together, and the flesh sticks. If you had no skeleton, the flesh, the flesh would crumble, right? So you have the skeleton. So now it's about clarifying what the teacher is in Get, getting understanding now because you have the key concept is making sense which you might have not gotten in when you did the first first uh, review uh, and then now it's capturing you make your detailed notes it doesn't have to be perfect because you know later you're going to do some visual note taking right just capture your notes all right and then you think about how to visualize them remember i said the most powerful thing in to remember anything is the ability to visualize any form of concept word and transform the key concepts into this vivid crazy images memorable images unforgettable images uh, it can be anything it can be something you, you uh, we'll talk about that later how to visualize you can see this little monster you convert things into something vivid right so if you can do all that during the lecture now that you have we move on to what you should do after because you already captured the key concepts the key concepts you even thought about how to visualize it and then comes to what you should offer is the revision part right you revise and then you we talk about reflection i talk about reflection talk about the why's and how's what if so what then what ah this is the real power you not just want to prepare for the exam you want to prepare for life you want to become an intellectual right the reflection part and then you do your visual notes catching the key concept just like this this whole thing is actually a visual note summarizing the whole my whole talk which is going to last about 20 minutes oh yeah and then the eighth step is to repetition repetition is so important and we talk about space repetition that you not just repeat at the same time many times but you repeat at different times and you keep on recalling practicing recalling what you've learned so so you do it so many times like that whenever you want it you can recall that's what that's real learning that you can recall whenever you need it if you cannot recall when you haven't mastered it really to that level that you should and that's to me mastery that you can recall you can do it it's become subconscious boom it's like that ah so repetition can do that and especially space repetition and then of course we talk about skills uh, you need to practice and if you don't get it right don't panic right don't panic you get feedback you tweak you improve keep on looking at don't take something wrong with you it's just the way you're doing it the methods the strategies the techniques it can change you can work on that keep on looking deliberate practice and you'll get it right if you've got problem with maths maybe it's the formula maybe you cannot read the text problem maybe language skills problems you just keep on tweaking and you will get it right you have to believe in yourself just keep on going okay so these are the nine steps and actually if you practice all these nine steps i'm pretty sure that you will do much better than what you're doing now unless you're doing it already and I think if you within one to two semesters, if you're not getting straight A's, you will be getting straight A's. And your GPA, if it's not 3.8, 3.9, maybe it's 4.0, you're gonna get 4.0, okay? And if you don't get 4.3, 3.8, you get on the dean's list and you get on upper level, you know, first class honors, you will do that. This level, because this is all captured. I've done this for, I practiced this in the 90s and I've captured the best of the best. All in this drawing is the essential. If you practice all this, you do this before, you do this during, you do this after a lecture class or a, or a workshop and so on, you become a powerful super learner, okay? So this is uh, how to summarize. So inshallah, you just practice these things. At least some of these things, at least you prepare, but just do a quick revision. You learn how to focus and you capture the essence and you revise if you do that. 
uh, you will have such a, a joy to study because an impact in your learning process and you'll do very well and with that inshallah i have covered what i've tried to cover and i hope you enjoyed the session and all the best inshallah in your studies whether you're an adult a kid or a teenager inshallah okay wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh